Take a look at this striking image. One of the reasons I chose it for this learning module is that it depicts the Tower of Babel, the ancient symbol for human linguistic confusion. It was painted by Peter Bruegel the Elder in 1563, and it's an appropriate starting point for Chapter 9. Our topics in this chapter cover vagueness, ambiguity, and confused predication as the sources for a toxic stew of fallacies, including slippery slope, equivocation, amphiboly, composition, and division. We'll also look at a very interesting philosophical puzzle called the Sorites Paradox and close with some observations on the use of definitions as a cure for unclear language. So, let's begin. Everyone has had the experience of being misunderstood, and this cartoon captures a typical instance of miscommunication. The gentleman makes a statement in the form of a question. He rhetorically asks if the lady knows that the women's movement is humorless. He is essentially claiming that the women's movement takes itself too seriously. The lady, perhaps on purpose, treats this as a request to sing a song with the title, The Woman's Movement Has No Sense of Humor. She tells him to hum a few bars, and then she'll fake it. Maybe the women's movement does have a sense of humor, but it's totally lost on him. Essentially, there are three sources for our failure to linguistically communicate. Vagueness, ambiguity, and confused predication. When we slip into these miscues of speech, we often undermine our own arguments by committing fallacies or failing to effectively communicate our intent. Let's start with vagueness. When a word is vague, we don't know the boundaries of its application. We're unsure to which things it properly applies. As an example, take the word rich. Who qualifies as rich? Someone with $100,000? With half a million? Or with two million? The word rich is too vague to decide. Now contrast the notion of vagueness with the concept of ambiguity. When a term is ambiguous, it has more than one meaning and can refer to more than one thing. Since it's ambiguous, we can't decide which meaning or reference it's supposed to have. Incidentally, the etymology, that is to say, the word origins, of ambiguity give us a strong hint as to its meaning. The prefix ambi means two or both, and ambiguous literally means having two meanings. Here's an example. If I use the phrase challenging arguments, it's unclear whether I'm referring to arguments that are difficult, that is, hard to comprehend, or whether I'm referring to arguments used to dispute someone else's claims. There are also cases of visual ambiguity, such as this figure. Do you see two different ladies in this image, one young and one old? Look carefully. This concludes this segment of a multi-part lecture on fallacies of unclear language. Please proceed to the next segment.